I used to work as a 911 operator in a relatively large metro area. One night at about 3 a.m. or so, I answered a call from an elderly lady who said she didn't feel good. I tried to get more information about what was wrong, chest pain, trouble breathing, headache, is she a diabetic, etc. I got her address and phone number. She said no one else was home, but the door was unlocked so they could go in. No matter what else I asked about what was wrong, all she would say is, I don't feel good. Can you please send someone to help me? After a few minutes, she said, I'm gonna put the phone down for a minute. I need to go to the washroom. I tried to get her to stay on the line with me, told her she can do whatever she needs to get ready, but I'd like to be able to stay in contact in case there's a problem. She said, I'm gonna put the phone down. I'll just be a minute. A couple of minutes passed, then the fire department called on scene, so I just disconnected and didn't think much about it. I told them the patient advised the front door was unlocked and she was in the bathroom. A couple of more minutes and one of the firefighters called over the air with a weird tone and said, Uh, how exactly was this call received? I told them, The call was first party from the patient's home phone approximately 8 minutes ago. He didn't respond, but called the desk from his cell phone, which usually only happens when something weird is going on that they don't want broadcasted since anyone can listen to the radios. On the phone he said, Are you sure this wasn't a third party call from a family member or something? I said, negative. Caller advised, I don't feel good, and said no one else was home. So, to the best of my knowledge, the caller is the patient. Have you made contact? He said, yeah, she was in the bathroom like you said, but she's been dead for about 12 hours. Cold to the touch, fully livid, full rigor. We're gonna need a deputy out here. Afterwards, we pulled the tapes of the radio and the phone calls and checked the timestamps, address, phone number, and went over everything a few times to see if I missed something. I called them back in the morning after the shift to see if they had any more information, but they were just as weirded out as I was. The phone was in the living room, and the patient was in the bathroom but the call was definitely from that phone. Still have no idea what the most likely explanation is. So many paranormal things happened to me back when I was a kid. One that has always struck me was when I was about three or four years old. Back then, I used to randomly wake up in the middle of the night really often for unknown reasons. I was still sleeping in my parents' bed at the time, so I would just lay in my back and look around. I swear, every single time I'd look at the doorway to the living room, I would see two really tall figures standing there. They looked like the old farm couple in that one painting except they had hollow eyes and they were much thinner. They never really did do anything but stare back at me at first. One night was especially weird. I woke up as usual and saw them standing there, in front of the doorway again. Only this time, something felt a bit more off than usual. The ceiling fan was on high and the blades were going so fast that the entire fixture was moving back and forth. I look back at the figures and they have some really dark, creepy grins on their faces. I got scared and buried myself in the blankets hoping that they'd go away. 
Then, all I heard was a ceiling fan spinning even faster. Somehow, the beats at the very end of the switches were tapping against the glass light cover furiously. I peeked up out of the covers, and the two figures were right there next to the bed, standing right over me with their ugly smiles. I screamed in bloody murder, and the glass cover on the light came off and shattered on the ground. My dad jumped out of bed immediately and turned on the lights to see what happened, but the two figures were already gone. I was crying hysterically, and it took my mom a long time to calm me down. So much other stuff went on while I lived there, but that was the worst experience I have ever experienced. This happened to me a few years ago. First, a little backstory to explain. I am Muslim. My huge family tree is Muslim. One of our beliefs is that there are spirits called jinns. They don't inhabit the living world, but they do visit. They are unseen spirits. Spooky, right? Anyway, sometimes kids can see and speak to them. Now onto the story. I was visiting my cousins on my aunt's side. They have two 18-year-old boys and a 7-year-old boy. We had just come back from dinner. The little boy, who we'll call John, walked in first after his mom unlocked the door. He turned and waved at a plant in a dark sitting room. We thought nothing of it. Later on, his siblings went into the living room to watch TV while he stayed in the sitting room. I left, but watched him from behind a door. He turns and starts talking to the plant. It's a full-on conversation with replies and body language. Getting creeped out, I tell one of his older brothers. He tells me, and I quote, Yeah, he does that sometimes. I woke up late at night to use the bathroom a couple of times, and saw him talking to the plant. Once I walked in and asked him who he was talking to. He said, a friend. When I told him to go back to sleep, he turned to the plant and said, bye, I'll see you tomorrow. Me and his brother were creeped out. Then a thought arose. What if he was talking to the plant to help it grow? I said. His brother replied, Once, he brought some candy and put it on the couch near the plant. He told me it was for his friend who sits by the plant. Me and his brother decide to move the plant for one night. We don't tell him he wasn't even home. We find him by the couch later. We put down a recorder to see what he says to his friend. Here's what John says. Hello. I'm good. You? Why? Who moved it? Well, why would they move it? I'm sorry. I'll try to get it back for you. Do you like the candy? Sorry, I, I don't know. I'll go ask them for the plant. He comes up to us in the other room and asks us why we moved the plant. We didn't tell him we moved the plant. No one else was around to tell him. How did he figure it out? 